happy to. Hi and welcome to this vlog. Today I'm struggling a little bit with the weather. We are having a drought. We had one in 2018 and this year it seems to be the same deal. We're having the first partly cloudy day in I think about a month. Uh, so we're eager to get some rain and I don't have a lot of pro projects outside right now because it is so hot and so dry. Um, but I figured I want to craft something today and I decided that it's going to be something for my horses. I recently made my uh, husband a shaving brush from the horse hair that I gather every winter. This is the first time I'm binding a brush um, and I didn't um, turn this on a wood turning table. I, I just hand carved it. It's old apple wood that I saved some years ago. Uh, and the handle here is just also horse hair that I braided. I love being creative and I love trying new stuff. And this was very fun actually. It's very, even though it is horse hair, it's very soft and I think it's gonna be a good shaving brush. So, uh, and this is because I was gonna make some shaving balm uh, or shaving soap balm for him, yeah. Uh, so I wanted to make my own brush as well. So he had a, a gift from me and the horses But this was so easy that I wanted to make a brush to apply Some hoof cream or some hoof balm that I also make myself as you might have seen in one of my uh, other vlogs I, I do make my own balm from the marigolds and some beeswax and olive oil So I thought I would make a brush so that I can apply it to the hooves because right now I'm doing it with my hands and even though I my, my skin needs moisture sometimes it's too much moisture because I do have to apply this balm to their hooves when it's this dry every other day or so so I think it will be a good idea to make a um, to make a brush for that so every year I cut their tails in in winter and almost every year or every year up until now I have been sending all this to a, a friend of mine that knows a local brush maker uh, because I do have both white and black uh, hair so and they they have been very happy for it but they didn't ask for any this year so I just kept it in in, in the chance that they were late uh, to sending me a notice uh, but they didn't yet so I figured I'm gonna use some of this to making my own brush for them and the apple tree that I used for the brush for my husband I still have a lot of that left and we recently cut down of our older apple trees because it was just standing too close to another tree so I do have a refill of that so now I'm not so sparing with the wood that we have from the old old apple tree so I'm gonna finish uh, with the axe on this piece I have some bark left on it still and then I'm gonna get my chisels to just chisel out the shape and finally I'm gonna dremel it with a sandpaper dremel just to make it smooth so I think I'm going to use some of the white and some of the black. Maybe uh, I do a reverse pattern of this one. So white around and then black in the middle. I think that will be nice. And then it's, of course it's going to be a little longer uh, because I, it is going to have a handle so I can move it like this on the horse's uh, hooves. I was about to start and then I hear a squeaking sound in the feed box that we have turns out that the kitten's mom have brought them a live squirrel 
and it's now in my feeding box. What do you have to say for yourselves? It's right there. You can tell the tail. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> How do I get it out? Yes, so I got the squirrel. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the forest and hope they don't do this again. This is not the first time this has happened, but I've never seen a live squirrel and there are only dead ones. So I'm happy I got to it first. This is not cat food. <laughs> So I think I have the shape somewhat now. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything fancy. I'm just gonna bring out what is already there. I really love the the grain of the apple tree. It has such a you, you cannot really see it when it's this dry, but it has like different colors of the the growth rings. So it's really pretty. I have some lines here that is remains of a uh, older product that I uh, old, older project that I did with this tree. Uh, so I'm just gonna go around this and make this the middle part, and I might give it a little ring on the handle just for extra support for my fingers. And that I think that's gonna be perfect length for this grip. And then I'm gonna make like a round shape for where the bristles will attach to it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and change to my knife now and just get the details a little bit more in there. So experiencing a drought again after 2018 is just, it's a little bit, it is what it is now because we have been through this and we made it through even though we got really bad hay in 2018. This year we have gotten our hands on 15 bales because we very early felt that, oh, this is gonna be a problem. So we went out and got some hay and we actually got it at a fair price during this time. And I know that when it is a drought, everyone loses. So I know that the prices are, they, they go up because they need to earn money on what they do as well. It is just, it can be very, very stressful when the prices go up threefold and I'm also ex expecting that the price of grain is going to go up because they also got a bad season or a bad start at least this year. So it's it's pretty difficult with that whole situation um, for everyone. And we do have our own well here, so we have the risk of running out of water. 
and we hope that doesn't happen because our well has it, it held up 2018 and we're doing the same things that we did then we don't shower more than a couple of minutes at the time we don't wash our clothes anymore uh, at home we, we we do that in another place and we have rain barrels a lot of rain barrels so we do keep our own uh, rainwater and we also made cover crops this year i we didn't expect it to be a drought but we had leftover seeds so we just planted them at the pea bed and this bed is the best one that we have right now because it keeps the moisture in with all that cover so we're gonna do that from now on i think in the future as well and then we also just feed our horses and our other animals a lot of wet food and that because it is so dry and warm I think they like that really much so we do a lot of things to just cope with the drought and I hope we make it through and I hope we get some water in a in a day or two they are saying that it's gonna rain so we hope for the best So I am going down to my best goat, Cringer, which I have been um, milking over the summer and the spring. And she's also going to get some of the yummy food that I prepared for the horses. They really like that as well. They don't really feel the drought as much as the horses, I think. So it's nice to be unaware of things like that. <laughs> up you behave absolutely not absolutely not no Bebop took the lion's share, so I need to bring more down here, <laughs> that's for sure. But they do love it, and it's nice to be able to provide them a little bit. Everything is so expensive when you have a drought, so a little bit nervous about that too, but I hope we make it through well, and all the hay that we have is, is good. So it is time to begin with the Dremel. I feel like I have enough of the outline. So I am starting with my power tool here, my Dremel, just a normal Dremel. And I use a sandpaper head. Just pop this on, press it down, there we go. So just to bring out most of the details, I feel like this tool is a little better for the details because it is just more precise. So I have gotten this far. I am pretty happy with the shape right now. Uh, I cannot do any more before I have the brush itself. So I can create a hole here for um, the bristles to sit in. So I am going to wait to do anything more on it before I have the bristles done and ready to go in. So now I have to figure out a way to measure how uh, wide or just to hold the hair in place so I can bind it. So now I'm going to do the actual binding of the brush. And surprisingly enough I couldn't find 
hardly anything on how to do this on the internet. I found some videos watching some women do it uh, in Switzerland, I thought it was, and they used a little uh, circular, uh, something like this, where they could put the hair in so that it, the hair could stand up and they could just take a look at the hair and then bind the hair around the rim. So I figured a way to do that is to just use some cardboard and just cut it out in, in that uh, width that I want for the brush and then just gaffer tape it together. That is what I did with the other brush and it seemed to work just fine. Uh, of course the, the ring mold that they used were uh, stainless steel but cardboard works fine <laughs> so I'm gonna use this. And when I am putting the hair down in it, I'm gonna press them together a little bit and just make enough space so I can bind it really hard. And it would be a little bit smaller than this, but almost to the edges. So there we go. Now I have to pick through my hairs and make the pattern that I would like and bind it. Okay, so I do have several of these tumult uh, hair strands and now I'm just gonna roughly cut it to the about the size that I am gonna use uh, and then I'm gonna sort through the hairs one by one or clump by clump just any broken hairs or uh, not long enough hairs and just crooked hairs I'm gonna sort them out. Uh, and then I'm gonna put it in my little hair holder here. hear the drops in here oh and it's thundering as well yes we really hope that more rain will come started like super raining outside so that is very 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 nice I am gonna bind this one I do see a few more crooked hairs here I think this will be good enough for a start okay so the hairs so the hairs have been boiled now and I've put them in my little makeshift holder here and the best way to get them all at the same level at the bottom is really just to like hop it like that and if you see any hair sticking up like this one you can just push it down might also be that it's just that long but just give them all a little tap and then I would push this out and you can see all the hairs that are crooked there there is a little one <clears throat> and you can see here I can push down the outer layer a little bit more and I would just go ahead and take my thread and bind it down here Now I have bound it as tough as I could, as tight as I possibly could. And I am gonna put super glue first on just the bottom here and then on the side. And after that, I'm gonna just uh, loosen these and 
I'm going to see if the straws on it will hold. Just go through them one more time, just to pick out all the crooked hairs and and um, yeah. hairs that wasn't long enough. Uh, and yeah, then it is time to put in the handle. Okay, so I am almost there. I have drilled the hole in the handle here and I have sanded it down finely and I took the string away because it was dry my hair is here and you can see it's all nice and glued here and I've drilled it so it fits in the hole neatly without the risk of it falling out and now I am ready to do the epoxy and then I'm gonna cut the hairs in the form or shape that I would like and then I will finally need to oil the wood and then I'm done. So I put the epoxy all over the sides inside the, the hole here and now I am ready to fit it in. Here we go. nice and tight in there there it is now i just have to wait five or ten minutes for it to dry and i can cut the hairs okay so i opted for a shorter brush i had it a little bit longer but i i want that stiffness to it when i apply the hoof balm so this is how it ended up. I am very, very happy. It's so cool that I have a tractor tumult apple tree brush <laughs> for their hooves. And I have some sesame oil here that I'm gonna oil it with. I chose the sesame oil because I ran out of uh, walnut oil, which is what I usually use to oil wood because I don't like it when it's too yellow. I like when it's when it comes out like woody and beige brownish so you can see the the lines in the tree there you go i'm just gonna put a little bit in the bristles down here there we go there it is And now we just need to let it rest a little bit and let the oil soak in and then I can try it. Oh, can it stand? No, <laughs> it can't. I, I might also make a, a little uh, braid here so it can hang somewhere.
am very happy about how the brush turned out. I am very excited about learning this new hobby and I am gonna make a few brushes, I think. I did do a deep dive into brush making and I found out that they make the Japanese calligraphy brushes out of goat hair from the goat's chest. So um, I might make a brush from goat hair <laughs> at some point in the future. Uh, so that's gonna be really fun. We also have an email right here, very interested. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening to my panicky thoughts about the drought and everything. I am so happy that we got rain and I am very much looking forward to more brush making in the future. You look damn fine if I have to say so myself, boy bop. Oh yeah, look at this goody. Look at all this gorgeous hair goody. Oh yeah. Wow. This could make a good brush, Bebop. How do we get it off you? <laughs> hey, shmup. Yeah, you're a cool goat. Yeah, see, the girls. No, 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 no. <laughs>